We could wait and see how long it would take us to name uh, Sam Hartman in this conversation, but we might as well just cut right to the chase and start yeah. with that guy because he is the major difference between what Notre Dame football is on the field in the first four games, but I think even more so potentially what it is against the elite teams on the schedule versus what Notre Dame football has been over the last 10 or 15 years, whoever you want to place in that best quarterback category. I would go back to Brady Quinn is probably the best quarterback now that Sam Hartman has taken the field. Maybe it's Jimmy Clausen. Ian Book certainly had a nice run, but wasn't that guy. Uh, so your thoughts about Sam Hartman, what he's brought to the field and, and maybe some other growth aspects and development of this passing game that we could see the rest of the season. Yeah. I mean, not much more I can say, uh, you know, outside of what you've already said yourself, but, you know, just, just a different element. Like you mentioned the, you know, we haven't really had Notre Dame hasn't really had a quarterback like Sam Hartman that can push the ball down the field since, I mean, I'll probably say Deshaun Kaiser um, or at least early on Deshaun Kaiser. Um, but from a consistency standpoint and someone that you could really trust to go win you a lot of games, it was either Clawson or Quinn. Um, and I know obviously the Clawson years weren't, you know, great for Notre Dame in general. I think they had maybe one good year with him, but the offense certainly wasn't lacking. That was maybe for some other, <laughs> for some other stuff. Right. But, um, and then if you just look at it from last year's team, I mean, I know that Notre Dame and Ohio State played week one last year and you can, you know, sometimes week one is hit or miss in terms of what a team's actually going to become. I mean, I think if you were to look at Notre Dame after the first two weeks last year, they lose to Ohio State, they lose to Marshall, obviously, in a, in a big upset. I don't think Clemson fans would have been scared of Notre Dame and then they go in and they beat, they beat Clemson, right? 35 to 14 or whatever it was, but no one was scared of Notre Dame's quarterbacks last year, whether that be Tyler Buckner when he started his first two games and then the bowl game or Drew Pine who took over and started, started nine games. So now you bring in Hartman who, you know, coming into this season was, you know, one of the all time leaders or whatever in touchdowns in the ACC passing yards in the ACC, all that kind of stuff. And now you put him on a Notre Dame roster that, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it has more talent from like a, maybe a wide receiver perspective, um, I think the Wake Forest wide receivers have been really good with Sam Hartman over the last, um, you know, four or five, you know, four or five years that he was there. Um, but you mix in with the running backs, the defense, um, the uh, the offensive line play specifically. And you, know, you get a guy like Sam Hartman who can really elevate a program like Notre Dame into a possible uh, championship contender um, instead of just a possible playoff contender. Mm -hmm. We've got an Amazon link in the description section. You can help us grow the channel by grabbing that Amazon link, putting it somewhere where you will not forget it and uh, use the Amazon mm -hmm. link. We've tried it with like 20 people. It's the same shopping experience. Doesn't cost you a penny. Got Nathan Erbach here to talk Notre Dame football. Leave your comments, questions there in the chat. We will certainly get to them. Uh, the best questions and the super chat questions. We certainly will get to in the chat as well. So the stereotypical thought process for the average college football fan about Notre Dame offensive football as we stick to that side of the ball is uh, minus Sam Hartman. That has been probably the biggest addition for an elite team or near elite team uh, of anybody in college football. Other than Tyler Buckner, we saw his presence at the Alabama-South Florida game. That was the biggest <laughs> impact maybe. Uh, no, so Sam Hartman certainly, uh, but the rest of it is – uh, this is going to be one of the best offensive lines in the country. This is going to be a power running game. They're going to try to enforce their will with a with a stable of running backs and usually one guy that stands out that's gained a thousand yards. We could go through the recent history. Uh, wide receivers who are really good, many of which go on to the NFL and have productive careers, but maybe not the guy that takes the top off the defense at wide receiver. And of course, a stable of tight ends and one guy that's elite at that position as well. And then back to the wide receivers looking for that guy and then having maybe a couple guys on the roster that were recruited to be that guy that did not fulfill expectations. So going through the entire offense, where do you think we stand on all those stereotypes? Yeah. So I'll, I'll start with running back. Cause that's kind of, I think the, 
the interesting position on the roster this year. They obviously have Audric Estime, who's been there. This is his third year. Uh, first year, we've kind of redshirted for the most part. And last year was was there with Logan Diggs as the top guy. He was good last year. Don't get me wrong. Like he was, I mean, I would say he was probably really good last year. I think he's probably borderline great this year. Um, I know Notre Dame has played more t- more games than most teams in the country because they played week zero against Navy, but he does lead the uh, lead the country in rushing. As of right now, he's averaging somewhere around eight yards a carry, whatever it may be. Um, and he just he just looks like a different player. Um, he's he's pretty much the same size as always. Been. He's a big guy. If you guys know who Audrey Estime is, he's like six foot, two hundred and forty ish pounds. Um, they probably list him at two thirty. That I call I call bull crap there personally. Um, he's he's pretty rocked up, but um, I, the speed element to his game has really shown more. Um, last year he was kind of more of a bowling ball who could. You know, he could he could break off, you know, your 20, 25 yard runs and then get, you know, caught from behind or whatever. This year he's had a few runs where he's not getting caught from behind. He had one called back actually last week on a holding call that, you know, you could argue whether or not the holding call would have been uh, um, would have affected the play or not. But um, and then he had one against NC State where he broke for 80 yards. So he he just he looks he looks like he's improved from sophomore year to to junior year. And so and he's he's the lead dog. The good thing that Notre Dame has this year is they have about four other guys at running back that they can really count on. Um, they lost Logan Diggs, obviously, to LSU, and that was a big loss. He was my favorite running back on the roster. Um, and when I say that Audric Estime has kind of taken that step from sophomore to junior year, I think that he has helped kind of supplement that loss by himself. But Jadarian Price was a true freshman last year that tore his Achilles in fall camp. There was a lot of talk behind the scenes that he was going to be the number one running back if he didn't get hurt last year. So you bring him back. He's still coming off the injury, obviously. So you have to, they're kind of slow working him. I think the I think they're going to use him more against the teams like Ohio State, USC, Clemson on their schedule because A, they want to rest him, and B, they kind of want to use him as I guess a quote unquote secret weapon of sorts, right? Um, so definitely look out for Jadarian Price in this game. Jeremiah Love is a true freshman. Probably if he's not their fastest guy on the roster, he's 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 there and he's close. He uh, he scored the first touchdown against Tennessee State this year um, for them, and um, he's definitely someone that can, you know, he's not taking the top off the defense in the sense of like a wide receiver role, but he's but he's able to run past guys and you know pick up 40, 50 yard gains at will. Um, and then they have Devin Ford, who they got as a transfer from uh, Penn State, who has been hurt. He got dinged up. I think it was in the Tennessee, Tennessee state game. He's been their main returner. He had a concussion, but he came back last week. Um, and then Jabron Payne, who's kind of like their, their do it all back. He third down, he's the guy that is pass protecting and, um, you know, and you can bring Audric out for some rest. Um, he'll pick out, he'll pick up some, you know, some two, three yard gains for you on short down and distances and stuff like that. So they don't just have that one guy this year that they have to rely on. Um, even though you're probably going to see Audric estimate get, most of the carries in general. Um, when you look at the offensive line, I mean, I think it's pretty much is, you know, it's it's the standard offensive line that Notre Dame has. They have the bookend tackles and Joe Alt, who's going to be a top 10 pick, Blake Fisher, um, who I think could return next year and play left tackle for Notre Dame just to kind of up his stock. But if he, if he has a good end of the season um, or a good rest of the season, then you're probably going to get um, – you know, a potential another first round pick this year if he decides to leave. Uh, Zeke Carell has been in the program for a long time at center. He, he's been anchoring that for the last three years. Um, fifth year guy um, who's just solid all around. And I would say if you if they have a weakness on their offensive line, it's their guard play. I mean, last year you had Jared Patterson and Josh Lug, who were both fifth year, sixth year seniors. Um, they're off in the NFL. Uh, at least in Jarrett Patterson's case, Josh Lug made a camp and didn't end up uh, making a roster. But um, they got two young guys, but two young guys that they're very really excited about. And um, I'll steal a quote from Greg Greg Flamong and uh, Jamie Ewan Emma, who uh, who run the uh, Irish Sports Daily website. They've been solid. The the problem with them is that when they've had plays against them that are are negative, they've been loud. If that makes sense. So it's like they I would say ninety five percent of the time they're doing their job and they're doing it well. But the five percent, you can you tell you you know when it happens. Um, so if they can limit that a little bit against Ohio State, that would be obviously uh, um, a, a big factor. Um, if you're not seeing those plays outside of the film room or something like that after the game's over, um, that would be huge for their offensive line. Um, and then the receiving core. And I know I've been talking here for a little bit, Mark, so I apologize. But that's why um, we've got you here, Nathan. I can <laughs> talk all week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But the uh, the wide receiver core, they don't have a Marvin Harrison Jr. 
I'm not going to sit here and try to sell anybody the fact that they have maybe like that true number one. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a, a, probably a generational type uh, level receiver. Um, but even if you were to look at like, maybe a school like Washington, who has maybe th two or three guys that are just really, really solid players in uh, McMillan, you have um, Roman Duze. They, I don't even think they have a guy of that caliber per se. Mm -hmm. What they do have is a lot of guys you have to account for. Um, they, they, I think they probably have a number one in Jaden Thomas, but when I say number one, it's just that he's their number one. He's not, I wouldn't say he's a number one on a lot of teams, um, that are, you know, in the top 10 to top 15, but they have a lot of guys that are, that do different things and can be, and you, and like, like I said, you have to really account for them because they're not, they're not scrubs. They're going to get open. They're going to make plays. Um, but they're not going to maybe have that huge game where they, take over like a Marvin Harrison Jr. would and have, you know, 10, 12 catches for 200 yards and two touchdowns when you really need it. They're going to spread the ball around. They're going to spread the ball to their tight ends. Um, and I'll kind of lump the tight ends with the receivers in that aspect because um, Holden stays, I think, has four touchdowns already um, on the season. Um, their, their most before Michael Mayer last year was six in a season, and he already has four, so obviously another quality tight end there. Um but uh, no, I mean, you got Tobias Merriweather and Chris Tyree who can take the top off the defense if need be. I think you, they showed that a little bit against uh, Central Michigan, um, which I actually wanted to get into here once we have a second. Uh, I think that was a good thing that they showed on Saturday. But uh, other than that, no, there's a lot of guys you have to account for and you can't you can't necessarily just leave one wide open or something like that because they'll they'll, they'll make you pay for it.